going to start with one of our classes right in front of said fans today. They are anxious and ready to go, and we are ready to go with Formula One. This 3.5 mile course and speeds are getting up there around 250 miles an hour. Some unbelievable stuff. Of course, we got a great field assembled here. This is 1A. This is the gold qualified featuring the defending champion from 16 and 17 last year, Lowell Slater in the Freight Knot. He will be in pursuit of Steve Senegal, the number one qualifier over 245 miles an hour with six championships to his credit in the Endeavor, most recent in 2015. And of course, Justin Metters is what is always in the conversation here, a paraplegic flyer with a plane that is designed for his special situation. So this airplane actually has zero provisions for an able-bodied pilot. It's designed specifically for myself as a paraplegic pilot. Um, my uh, pitch and roll control is the same as anybody else's, but I have a left stick in the airplane that moves forward and back for left and right rudder. And then it, on that stick I also have the throttle, um, so it's a twist motorcycle throttle. And then on each stick I have a uh, brake uh, master cylinder so that I can have differential braking for each wheel. So it's a, it's a bit different than standard, uh, and, and coordination-wise, flying the airplane, you're, it's um, it's a little more difficult to uh, get co stay coordinated and all that kind of things because you're doing it, two different things with your hands at the same time, or more than two things sometimes. So it's a little bit more uh, complicated. It's definitely a handful to fly all the time. My hands are on the controls at all times. So. The airplane knows, though, it, it has no clue that you know what I mean. It flies just like anybody else's airplane once it's in the air. We well, saw the green flag go down, and as we get started with this Heat 1A, we should say that F1 or Formula 1 is one of two of our classes, Steve, where the race is does, it's not a flying start, literally. It starts on the deck. Yeah, this is what we call our Grand Prix-style standing start. When the red flag is up, our pilots know that they've got 10 minutes. When the red flag comes down, it counts down to two minutes, and the crews have to move away from the aircraft. When the green flag goes up, they have to get ready. They start holding the brakes, powering up these mighty O200 engines. When the green flag goes down, it's go time. We are underway. These eight competitors in Heat 1A here, also including uh, Judy, piloted by Matthew Coughlin, Tumbleweed with Jerry Marshall, no strings attached. Philip Justin, that's race 79. Ross Killen was a part of the conversation last time around last year. Made a great, great run with the Kraken and Philip Goforth in Annie. One of the cassettes. You know, Tommy, I might add that that standing start brings in a lot of strategy for these crew chiefs because just like taking off on your bicycle in low gear versus a high gear, these guys have fixed pitch props, which means they can't change the pitch of the prop in the air. So they've got the choice. They can start out with a flat pitch or a power prop. It's going to get them in the air quicker, get them off the line quicker. But then again, just like riding your bike in that low gear, you're going to tap out as far as your, your top end earlier. If you go with a high pitch prop, you're going to give up a disadvantage on the takeoff, but you're going to have a lot more bang and punch at the end of this race when you really need it. So a lot of strategy goes into the standing start. Trade-offs and strategies, it is like a chess game in the air. And just like chess pieces have their own name, these pilots and crew chiefs actually name their own props. That's how personal they are, the choice of props on these aircraft. Well, look at positions one, two, and three. Those were definitely our two, or actually our three favorites, our three top qualifiers, starting out with Justin Matters, actually, whom we just met in that special feature there, leading the way at this point. Now, one of the things you'll notice, all three of these lead airplanes are carbon fiber or composite designs. This class actually started in 1936 as midget racing. They were actually a, a, an official class back in 1947. They still retain the 200 cubic inches, which was chosen upon in 1968. So they're running a Continental O200, which is an opposed Boxster style engine, 200 cubic inches. Uh, in stock form in a Cessna 150, they made about 100 horsepower. And these guys, running a shorter prop, they're making 160 plus horsepower. Instead of turning 2,750 RPM, they're turning almost 4,500 RPM by going with a 54 inch prop versus the longer 72 inch prop on a Cessna 150. Well, watch Justin Metters in action there and look at that current speed. That's right up there, even above the top qualifying speed before this race started. So he's found something, Steve, that is working very, very well and keeping him in the lead. Yeah, when these aircraft first started out in the midget class, most of them were Cassett or shoestring racers. Those were a steel tube and wood frame wings with fabric covering. Uh, these three leaders are all composites. 
Back in 1991, John and Trish Sharp, uh, they came out with Nemesis Oil Racer. It was a composite aircraft designed in the back works of Lockheed Skunk Works. It was carbon fiber design and it led them to 15 consecutive victories. So while this is still a very affordable class to get into with a fabric covered uh, Cassiter shoestring racer, if you want to win, you're going to have to have a composite one like these three leaders do. Come see all the action this fall in Reno, including the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. Get tickets now or watch the racing live at airrace.org. Well, Justin Matters hanging in there. He's definitely in control of this race with a little Slater giving chase. A little Slater does not like to lose. And, of course, oh, we'll talk about the process of passing. If you can put yourself in position, you cannot duck down to the inside. You have to go on the outside in just about every case. That's a great point, Tommy. When I raced motorcycles, I was notorious for sticking my front wheel between the other competitor and the tire on the inside. If I could get my tire between them, I was going by them. You can't do this in air racing. All passes have to be wide and to the outside or above them. You have to call your position when you're going around them. You can't dive in for obvious safety reasons. You cannot go in the blind spot of the other pilots. Metter still in charge, but no one has run away from the field. This is good racing, Steve. This is what the people came to see. Oh, yeah, there, there are, our formula classes start early in the morning because they are susceptible to wind, especially on landing. So the fans that get out early see some of the tightest racing of the day, which starts out first thing in the morning out here at Reno Stead. Really can't express to you, and it's hard to tell watching them in the air how really small these craft are. You saw on the deck, you had a little perspective there, but they—you really just put it on like a spacesuit more than more than climb climb into a cockpit. They actually wear these aircraft. You bet. The aircraft has a minimum weight of 500 pounds, which is half the weight of a Harley Davidson motorcycle. The pilots have a minimum weight of 150 pounds with gear, which that's usually not a problem. Most of these pilots haven't seen 150 pounds since they were in the fourth grade. The airplanes have to have 66 square foot of wing area. They are fixed gear and, as I said earlier, fixed pitch prop. So some limitations. It's amazing the speed they're getting out of airplanes with the gear hanging out in the wind and unable to change the pitch of the prop in the air. Absolutely remarkable. Just the triumphs of innovation and inventiveness and technology, too. And, of course, extra technology required for race 34. Justin Matters plane, and it's all paying off right now big time, Steve. Yeah, if you go down in our pits, which is the great thing about Reno, you can go into pits, you can talk to the pilots, you can get up close and personal these amazing race craft. You can see just how slick that they go to get the, the smallest frontal area and the, the smoothest drag coefficient at all possible. Because again, again, they've got landing gear hanging out in the wind, and they're still doing over 240 miles an hour with fixed pitch props and fixed landing gear. Simply amazing. You have a ceiling of 250 feet. After that, you have left the race course. Justin Matters occupying the upper part vis-a-vis uh, -vis his two pursuers here, and that's an advantage, too, should they get close and really threaten to pass him. Well, that clean air is always better air because not only do you have to worry about the you know, getting into pilot's turbulence, you've got to make sure if you go to pass them, again, it's got to be that clear pass to the outside or above them. So if you're out in the lead, you can fly your own race course, your own laps, stay in close to the pylon. But now, once again, when you start overtaking slower aircraft, even though you're going by them at 5, 10, 15, 20 miles an hour faster speed, you've still got to go wide and high. You can't dive to the inside, even if they are a much slower airplane. White flag is out. We are in the final of our eight laps right now, and it's just a matter of race 34. Justin Metters, limitless, hanging on, holding off tough competitors like Lowell Slater and Steve Senegal. You know, you can't really tell, I can't appreciate how close these airplanes really are. Uh, if you see a cockpit footage on this thing, and you look down at the shadows, they are almost, the shadows are side by side. You, you really can't appreciate how close these airplanes are right here unless you're in them going over 250 miles an hour. This is amazing racing. Look how tight this battle is here for second place between Slater and Senegal. Of course, these guys are all hoping for better pole positions when we reach the national championship round, the gold round. That was it. That is the steel power move of the day. All the way, Justin Metters of Fort Worth, Texas in race 34, limitless. Well, we we designed this airplane to hopefully be at the front, and now, you know, I guess it looks like out of nowhere, but we've been working on it for three years to get it to the front of these front of these races. So, we, a lot of work has gone into it, and a lot of development, and we, you know, finally we're able to start flying the airplane in January. So we had from January till now to put all that time into the airplane to figure out what, how to get it as fast as possible to get here, and I guess a lot of that stuff worked out for us today. 
Wonderful start in Formula One for Justin Metters. Congratulations, that's a beauty. Well, you can come to Reno, see all the action this fall, including the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. Get tickets now. Watch the racing live at airrace.org.